Hello, this is Marcel from Genelec and today I'd like to show you how you can measure your speakers with the free software RoomEQ Wizard, how you can evaluate the results and how you can find the best settings for the dip switches. First of all, please download the RoomEQ Wizard software. You can find it under roomeqwizard.com. In addition, you will need an audio interface or a sound card with an input and an output and a standard measuring microphone. You can also use the inexpensive ones, they'll also do the job, especially in the bass range. Now we start to configure RoomEQ Wizard for our measurement. So we go for Preferences, and we'll select our driver type, so ASIO or Java. Most professional audio interfaces um, offer the ASIO drivers. Then we select our device, and then we'll choose the output that will feed the sweep to the speaker and the input where we connect the measuring microphone. Just make sure that you have enabled the phantom power if you are using a condenser microphone. We'll now measure one speaker from our listening position. We always measure one speaker after the other. It doesn't make sense to feed the signal to both speakers at the same time, because it's important that each speaker couples to the room in the best way, and therefore we measure each of them separately. Some measuring microphones are equalized for the diffuse field, so they should point upwards. Other microphones simply should point towards the speaker. So just aim for the acoustical axis. For two-way speakers, it's usually between the bass driver and the tweeter. We now click on Measure. You can adjust the range of the sweep. For our measurement, we simply go from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. And now we have to adjust the level of the sweep. Let's just check this now. As you can see at the moment, it's a little too low. So we'll just change the output of our interface. Yes, and now it's okay, and we can start our measurement. The graphs you see now might look a little confusing in the beginning. So let's just try to adjust this, that you can easily see the frequency response. If you see the phase at the moment, you can just deselect this one, and now there's only the frequency response left. You should also use some smoothing. Just go for graph, and then let's say we want to have a smoothing of 1 12th of an octave. This is, for example, what we use in GLM for the bass range. You can then also set your reference. And now you can easily spot that, for example, mid-range and high frequencies are quite linear, but we have way too much bass. And this does not mean that the speaker is not linear. In the free field or in an anechoic chamber, the speaker is perfectly flat. But because of the influences of your room, for example, a placement close to the wall, the bass is boosted. Just because bass is omnidirectional, it gets reflected by the walls and it adds up to the direct signal. If you now listen to music without any adjustments, the music might sound a little muddy and too bass heavy. So what can we do? On the back of your speakers, depending on the model, you can find different dip switches to adjust the frequency response. As we see clearly here, we should focus on the bass. The first dip switch we want to use now will bring down the low bass. At the model I'm using here, the G2, this is just named low bass minus 4 dB. We'll now do another measurement. I will just name this the way that you can easily find out what you did before. And if we now select all SPL, we can have a look at different measurements at the same time. And this makes it really easy to compare the influences of the dip switches. So this is our basic measurement, and if we now have a look at low bass minus 4, we can now see that this dip switch has an influence on the lowest bass range. But we still see that the bass range is not linear at all. So let's now have a look at the dip switches called bass or bass tilt. I will now select bass minus 4. And now you can see that this EQ kicks in a little earlier. So it not only affects the lowest bass, but depending on the model starts already at, let's say, 7 to 800 hertz. Depending on the model, you can combine the bass tilt dip switches. For example, minus 2 plus minus 4, the result is minus 6. And of course, you can combine the bass tilt dip switches with the low bass. 
In our example, the speaker is standing in a corner, we'll have to use all of them. So I'm getting the best response here when I'm using bass minus 6 and low bass minus 4. And finally, let's have a look at the tabletop dip switch. This dip switch affects the region around 160 to 200 Hz and typically should be used if you place your speakers on a table because this table reflection can boost this frequency range. But you can also use it if you have the impression that, for example, you miss some clarity to your signal or that vocals might sound a little muddy. If we now take a look at the before and after, you can clearly see that we now have a bass response that is way more linear. So your system will have more clarity and more precision in the bass range. You'll realize that depending on your room and the dimensions of your room, there can be quite narrow boosts in a certain frequency range, for example because of a room mode. If you would like to compensate for room mode precisely, you could make use of our SAM models because our SAM speakers feature DSP filters that are controlled by GLM to perfectly compensate for these specific room influences. But as you have seen, for all basic adjustments the dip switches work perfectly fine. As a final example I would like to show you what happens if the speaker is not placed close to a wall. In this measurement you can clearly see there is a huge dip at approximately 115 Hz. This dip is just caused because of a distance to a rear wall. As the speaker is omnidirectional in the bass range, we have direct sound and we have the sound reflected from the wall. And they sum up at your listening position. And in this example they cancel out and this is causing the notch. It would not be possible to fill this notch with positive gain. The only option is to find a better placement for the speaker or of course acoustical treatment. But in this example the easiest way to get rid of this notch would be bring the speaker closer to the wall. Thanks for watching. Please also check out genelec.com. There you can find a lot of more information about room acoustics and speaker placement. You can also get in touch with us directly under support at genelec.com. See you soon.